Uh, how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Quite um, tired. Our screening was quite late last night. So. Oh, are you guys in Toronto right now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're in the oh, same wow. hotel. We're in the same hotel, <laughs> different rooms. Um, so first of all, I want to start by saying how much I enjoyed this movie and how uh, great of a job you guys both did. Um, and congrats on being part of the Toronto Film Festival. Before we jump into actually talking about the film, I like asking some curveball questions just to mix it up a little bit. So um, I'm curious, why are the British so good at making period pieces? I wouldn't well, know about British. No, I know you're not, but I'm just curious in general, you know, why are the British always so good at it? Question for you. Well, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're... Um... We've been good at it for a long time. We need it, we need it mixing up. We, hence, ever coming in to save the day, sort of start to mix it up a bit. We yeah, we've got a, a rich tradition of it, I guess. Um, and I suppose you know we we're steeped in like kind of literary classics about certain periods, and and I suppose we we we're always intrigued to revisit those. So <laughs> maybe that's it. I don't know. I mean. My experience now is that I think we are we're coming into a new age of period dramas, and that's an exciting thing. Well, and if I may intervene, although I'm not British, um, I I think it has to do with a certain kind of nostalgia of the empire. Also, Josh, you know it's oh uh, yeah yeah you know it's it's always in countries like that that have had a great moment in history um god some people are going to hate me when i'm saying that. <laughs> but i mean you know it's like the roman empire and the italians and you know and the portuguese and you know the whole conquista it just brings up um a desire to go back to these times and explore them uh so and and you know in certain cultures it's sort of a need and uh and they've become very good at it I'm I'm curious, Ava, if uh, if you could get the financing for any project, what would you make and why? Um, if I could get the financing for any project, well, you can't talk about everything that's the issue. <laughs> I mean, there's this book that I used to read when I was a kid, a young girl. And the main character is this key cast sound engineer, and she visits different worlds. And she's a very, very independent and fierce woman. And I grew up with that role model, and actually really inspired me. And I think she's still very, very relevant. And uh, but I know the author, who is in his eighties now, doesn't want to sell the rights. So. But one day, and that's a massive project. <laughs> yeah. But well, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's just one of the things you've grown up with. Completely. I, I hope one day that you do get the rights and can take that on. I uh, Josh, if you could guest star on a TV series, what would you guest star on and why? The Crown, sorry. <laughs> the Crown, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I reckon maybe Shit's Creek because it's really funny. And um, yeah, I think I'm like, whenever whenever I watch, I'm now, I've actually, Shit's Creek, I've got a kind of interesting relationship to because my entire family, my partner, my little brother, my mum, my dad, they've all been raving about Shit's Creek. And I watched, and this is a, an embarrassing admission, but I watched the first three series and I was just like, I, it's funny, but I just couldn't get into it. And now, uh, then I continued, and now I've watched the, all of the series like three times, and I'm obsessed. I think it's hilarious. No, so, I just shit's creep. I'd love to do that. Um, jumping into why I actually get to talk to you guys today. Uh, everyone watching, well, almost everyone watching, will not have seen the movie yet. And I hate asking the generic question, but, can, but Ava, could you sort of talk about what the film is about? I'm really bad at that. Um, I think the movie is about how hard it is to be a human being and how amazing it is to be a human being and how one doesn't go without the other and you just you just can't get it both ways and that's the incredible tragic beauty of it and you can look at it um, 
it's the half half full half empty glass you know and i think the movie is about the half full glass you know even when it's tragic there's something credible that you can gain from it no matter how hard it is i that's pretty good i think i think you're better at it than you think <laughs> um, one of the things that this film does so well is capture this period in time in British history that um, was after the war, and you can see the repercussions of what the war did to all these families and these people that even though they have this money, they, they're miserable because they've lost so much of their soul. Um, can you sort of talk about that, Josh, if you want to talk a little bit about that aspect of the film? Yeah, I guess that's one of the reasons I was excited to to tell this story with Eva and Odessa and the team is that I think it's kind of, it, it's a it's a period that's actually not that visited. You know, we visited the First World War and the Second World War often, and we'll continue to do so because it's such, because of the, ram, the kind of ramifications and the ripples that they've, uh, they've had on society um, going forward. But actually assessing that gap, the, the, the period in between the First and Second World War, we haven't done an awful lot of, and as you say, the sort of trauma um, that was left behind is huge in every, you know, in every part of society. And and um, and obviously, Mothering Sunday focuses on part of Mothering Sunday focuses on this community of, I suppose, wealthy, you know, the kind of upper middle class. Um, but I think, that, you know, the effects you see the effects with Jane, you see the effects. Um, later on in the film, I, th I think, and we still have the effects now. So, um, yeah, I think it's a it's an incredibly important time, and uh, obviously, from my perspective, it was about understanding the kind of uh, how impactful it was not to have, you know, to have to have lost an entire generation of young men and, uh, and servicemen. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating period in, in our history. Uh, Eva, something that I think you do so well in this film is that you, I feel like it's an authentic depiction of what two people being intimate would actually be doing in a room. It is, and I know that sounds, um, I'm, I'm trying to say this so it sounds right, but you know, all too often with movies, uh, people are intimate and all of a sudden they're fully dressed and they are, you know, it's just, it feels fake. It feels like you're watching a movie. And what you did with um, Odessa and Josh, uh, because, you know, the way their performances and the way you shot it and captured the scenes, it felt very real. Can you sort of talk about why uh, filming it that way and um, and just that honest depiction? Um, I don't know, I guess, you know, it just it's something that I think is very interesting, you know, to just go back and not to the, uh, cinematic representation of things but to draw experience from your own life and like from you know what you hear when your friends talk which is people spend a lot of time you know being around each other and not you know intimacy is not just about sex uh and that's a pretty obvious statement but it's rarely shown on screen because when they want to talk about real intimacy that it's just just about hot sex and i think sex is like a very small part of it all really uh it's important but it's it's also about how it happens afterwards and the level of comfort and i thought it was so beautiful to see that in the script you know where you had these two characters naked just hanging out and being so comfortable with one another and when you know the rapport that they have, you know, the rapport of social class differences and um, destiny differences, it's remarkable. And that's the beauty of humankind and human beings. You know, they tend to be able to bridge those gaps at, in those moments in life, you know, when, you know, it's, I, I find it uncanny, like some people have the ability to just drop everything everything that has been carefully constructed and uh, instilled in them as social human beings where you know you should feel this you should behave like this because they connect on a human level and they have an immediate in intimacy that goes beyond everything i've i've certainly had that, this experience i know paul and jane have this experience and i'm sure a lot of people in the audience have that and you know 
I, it's, that's the beauty of filmmaking, you know, it just allows you to revisit, revisit something that maybe you had access to once in your lifetime and to make it yours again and revisit. The movie's about that, it's about how do you make it yours? You know, how do you revisit things and, and, and enjoy them again? They're not enjoyable just when you live them, they're enjoyable also as a cherished garden within yourself. Completely. It's just, it's interesting to me, and I've had this conversation with other filmmakers, that uh, I don't know what's happened, but you can now be the most, do the most brutal things to the human body in a movie um, in terms of killing. And it's accepted with the, you know, like the MPAA and ratings boards. But if you show nudity or sex, it's like the walls sometimes come down. Um, I don't know how it is in, in Europe, but in America, it's like that. Um, did you have any sort of um, opposition from anyone saying this might be this de like putting uh, people's I don't how can I say this uh, this honest depiction might be an issue or was everyone with the producers and everyone on board oh quite the contrary actually I think everyone was quite exceptionally um, honest with themselves and what was needed for the story and um, but it's a matter of sort of of putting together the right um, team of people, you know, and I'm I'm talking about producer, director, actors. Josh and Odessa were exceptionally generous. Uh, I mean, after all, it's their actual buddies that they used to show that intimacy. And you know, I I started out as an actress when I was a teen, so I'm I'm acutely aware of how vulnerable it makes it makes you feel. So I'm I'm very grateful uh, when I have actors who, you know, just are not afraid to go there it's it's not a, that easy especially nowadays you know where the images you know they seem sort of out of your control much more easily um and uh and i think that if it's scary it's because it's honest you know i think description of violence you can easily remove your stuff from it it's like you know the doctors in the er they have to remove themselves from it because it's too much but when you get to descriptions of sex or intimacy, people get caught off guard and, and it's a much more heated subject matter. And, you know, I think we're entering times where, um, you know, being free spirited is not as obvious as, you know, it was in other eras, but, you know, history is, psych is cyclical. Um, you know, in ancient Rome, fluidity was, the standard in the 1920s things were much more fluid than now you know like people didn't really verbalize homosexuality or queerness for example they just were the bloomsbury group that we got a lot of inspiration from everyone was incredibly fluid you know they were going with men women like whatever it was about the sentiment it was about the feeling the emotion uh yeah it's so interesting how how life has changed uh, because I I, uh, I have a lot to say on that, but I'm going to not uh, open that door. Um, Josh, I definitely want to ask you, obviously, this is a very, you really have to put yourself out there in this role and you really have to, I don't want to say go for it, but you're really putting yourself out there. Um, when you got the script and you realized what you were going to be asked to do, were you apprehensive at all? Or were you sort of like the, you know, big, um, I guess, were you nervous at all? Um, no, not really. I, I suppose to me, it's kind of, um, I mean, the, I, I, I'm always nervous going into any role, but the thing for that I was, I suppose I had nerves about on this one was more to do with the, the deep sense of sadness that I, you know, had to try and lock into for Paul, which is this idea of, you know, Paul has two brothers and I've got two brothers and the idea of, losing them and and then having the extra weight of societal pressure and 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 marrying someone who perhaps not only do you not love in that way but actually you love as someone else you know you love she, she was supposed to marry his friend you know th th these are like um these are people that he does love that he doesn't want to be with and so that all that pressure that was more kind of nerve-wracking as for the nudity and all that stuff uh and it, i mean i always but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do it lightly. It has to be appropriate. But 
when you read the script and and when you read the novel, there's no way you could tell this film. Um, there's not essentially there's not a better way to describe Paul's lack of um, of emotional articulacy than to show his than to, for him to be able to find it in his uh, physicality, and that means everything everything about the way he dresses, the way he is around um, around Jane and. And so, yeah, there was. I was never really nervous or anxious about that. Eva, I really enjoyed your use of close-ups in the movie. And I'm curious, obviously, you know, it's big decisions on how you're going to frame something when you're shooting. Uh, can you sort of talk about uh, the decision of doing a, a lot of close-ups and the way you wanted to shoot the film? What do you mean the way I wanted to shoot film? Sorry. Or just like the, the framing of how you wanted to tell the story uh, with the use of close-ups in certain points. Um, I tend to try and not overthink how I want to film something because it can get stifled very easily and it can get gimmicky. Um, so I try to have a plan but remain very flexible about it and and i'm talking about that kind of film because it's a movie about human emotion emotions you know it's funny like i've i've i try to do very different things you know my previous movie had a lot of action in it and i find it much harder to shoot emotion uh action is kind of, i find it simple you know you have like a choreography of things and you decide where you put the camera and if you visualize things, it's just, you know, just a, sort of like falls into place by itself. With emotion, you have to create grace and create magic and create this moment, like in real life, when suddenly you're moved by something. So when I, when I wonder what's the right distance, I always start with the emotion, you know, how do they feel? inside you know how do they it's 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 about point of view for me and it's about the the right emotional distance if they feel very connected to themselves and the person that's in front of them i tend to go for a very um close close up like a 75 millimeter and if if they feel stifled or if they feel trapped in a very conventional role i tend to like stay away from them and you know on set that kind of rule guides you very easily because it makes choices easier because it, it's easy to get lost in the sea of options. They're like, ah, a lot of things are going to look beautiful, but if you need to be guided by emotions, that guides also the size of the frame. Uh, I apologize, Josh, I'm going to ask you e e another question, but I'm always curious about the editing process because that's the final rewrite. And I'm curious because this film jumps back and forth in time and it mimics the novel in the way that the story can sort of go in different directions. Can you sort of talk about um, uh, getting in the editing room and what maybe surprised you about the footage or some of the challenges you maybe uh, that hit you in the editing room? Well, you know, for me, I mean, for a lot of directors, there are three stages of three writing stages. There is the script stage, the shooting stage, and the editing stage, and each of them brings something different and requires something that needs to work at that moment differently. A scene might work incredibly well on set, and then you know if you find yourself in the edit, you'll realize that in context of the rhythm of the film and where you need to be at that point, it's too slow, too fast. So you have to reshape it. And you know, I just realized, for example, on this film, I had, you know, so many incredible options acting wise, you know, between takes. So it was definitely not, I didn't have any issue with that. What I had an issue with was, so what do I do with that now? Like, how do I shape it? And how do I say, how do I stay um, faithful to the actors and to the generosity of the performance while extracting what I need to extract exactly for the rhythm of the film and the narration. And, you know, I, I tend to think that I don't direct actors that much on set. You know, I just sort, sort of fine tune things, but you know, then especially with actors like Josh and Odessa and Colin and Olivia, they have, they're so connected to the right rhythm of things that 
it's beautiful to witness them and it's a privilege you know i'm like oh my god <laughs> i'm directing this <laughs> you know it's fun and then in the editing that's when the real fun starts for me um in terms of directing the performances because i can just really be their partners in the dance at that moment and like push them just so much further um if needed or on the contrary just like stay back because we both nailed exactly what needed to be done on set so the editing took a long time took seven months um because <laughs> it was a very very complex narrative and it needed to be that constant dialogue between the acting the writing the directing the the music and it's it's everything has to like advance together and so it's constant ping pong it just takes time you know time is is of the essence you know i'd say yeah it's it's funny because i i think a lot of the a lot of people do not realize what it really takes to make a movie and all the behind the scenes especially the editing process and how much can change um uh, Josh, I wanted to ask you, uh, I love learning about the behind the scenes of, you know, the making of movies and, you know, what you can't, what you normally don't hear about. What, is there anything that you might, is there anything that you think might surprise people to learn about the making of this film? Um, let me think. Uh, there's, lo I mean, there's loads of fun things, but I don't know if we'll, <laughs> there's one thing which is to do with the click, which is that Eva was very keen to find the rhythm of some of the sex scenes. And so sometimes Eva would, sometimes, who am I kidding? All the time, <laughs> Eva would click like this. And it would be to, it would be to help find a rhythm. It was more to do with the breathing, actually. It was to do with like, Eva was very keen to find a particular kind of breathiness because of the sound design and the intimacy of the shots and so, You'd be doing these intimate sex scenes, me and Odessa, and then in the background. With a French woman going. French woman going. Come on, faster. Slow. Yeah. Slow down now. Slow down. Um, and and then. Having sex the sex education I'd never had. So it was great. <laughs> and and I have to say, I you know, I, I, I kept a straight face, but I was, I was, I felt so much empathy for them because it's, it was so hard and, you know, people were, were wearing masks and I was like, I'm just very happy they don't like, you know, hate me, you know, officially in public. <laughs> they, they were very elegant about it. <laughs> I'm always curious. I know I'm just about out of time, but I'm always curious if you ended up with with films that end up with a lot of deleted scenes. Uh, did you end up with a lot of deleted scenes on this? No, we deleted, I think, one dialogue scene, two dialogue scenes, and and like a couple of other very small scenes. Like most of the script is on screen, and and you know we reordered a lot of things because what works on the page doesn't necessarily work on screen in terms of like real time real moving time but that's not to say that alice's script is not as exceptional it's just you know you just have to do that transformation completely um josh uh, i think it's my last thing for you um i i'm curious when you are getting ready to do like a big scene the next day let's arbitrarily say it's monday and you know this is a big day of filming where i have to be either emotionally vulnerable or really just do a lot how much are you in your head the night before thinking about everything you have to do? And how much is it sort of like, I can't think about it yet. I'm going to wake up early Monday. I'm going to get to set early and I'm going to, you know, get myself ready. I'm, I'm always curious how actors like to process when they're getting ready to do something big. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know that I have, I found a kind of uh, sort of proven method for it, but I think, uh, and so it does change. I mean, there's definitely been nights where, you know, the day after, as you say, I've got like a big scene and I just haven't slept. And then you're crying on set because you're just exhausted <laughs> rather than doing any emotion. But I think more often than not, I mean, the big thing, the kind of the struggle I come into is that I'm my instinct is to always make people, I guess everyone's instinct is to make people smile and be friendly and be nice and courteous. Um, um, but sometimes you have to be a little bit rude because I think in those in those moments of, um, of those significant moments, you do have to take yourself away. And the, the difficulty in filmmaking is that it is a team sport and you're surrounded always by the most 
like some of the coolest people you'll ever meet, the nicest and kindest and the funniest. And so, you know, to take yourself away and be like, today, I won't be making any jokes. I won't be talking to you. I'm just off on my own is quite a hard thing in itself because you feel terrible and you feel like you're being rude. But I think the other thing is that, pe- you know, gener- I'm learning that generally people get it and people understand when when's the time to kind of be, fre- you know, joke around and when's the time to like, you know, leave me or anyone else to it. So generally I just kind of go off walking, you know, in straight lines and and uh, stand in the corner and try and make myself sad or whatever it is. Yeah, it's interesting. I've, I've spoken to a lot of actors and they, they talk about certain days. Uh, they, you know, um, it's just interesting how the process is, is so different for everyone and how some actors can just flip it on in a moment and others yeah. really... Need, I can't know. do that. I can't do that. Like, I, and I've seen, you know, Olivia Coleman, and I can say this because she says it, she said it herself. Olivia Coleman could be having a laugh and the next minute, you know, she's, you know, doing the most unbelievable performance you've ever seen and she's crying. She, it's just genius. I just can't do that. I have to kind of take myself into a space and... Um, I wish I could do that, but I just can't. So, yeah. I, I'm uh, I'm sure as time goes on, maybe, oh, who the fuck knows? You know, yeah, you yeah. never know. Um, hey, listen, I'm going to stop there. Um, but while we're still talking, I just want to say again uh, how much uh, I enjoyed this movie and both of your work in it. Um, and I really want to thank you for giving me your time. Thank you.